Out of 100 people that begin the entrepreneurial path, only one succeeds. Yet, despite the odds, we still give it a go. When I think of great entrepreneurs, I don't think about the cars they drive, the money they earned, the vacations they went on. I don't care about any of that. I care about the value that they were able to provide out there into the world. It seems that when everybody's going right, entrepreneurs go left. They take the longest road, the hardest road, the unknown path, but if done right, also the most rewarding path. Today, I'm going to be telling you about a man's journey, a 10-year journey of entrepreneurship, the highs and the lows that he went on and how he was able to beat the odds. Because remember, only one out of 100 succeed. But as he begins this journey, he starts to second-guess himself. He starts to talk to himself. He says, what if I fail? What if they laugh at me? But as he says all of these things to himself, his inner dialogue starts to speak to him. His passion, that fire inside his belly was louder than any of the doubts and the fears that he had. And he tells himself, I can do this. I will do this. I'm going to go out there into the world and I'm going to provide a crushing amount of value. I don't know how, but I will. And so it begins. But as he begins, family, loved ones, people close to him, start to say, what about plan B? Don't, don't, don't. I, I hear that you're excited, but what about plan B if that doesn't work? Now, it takes a special type of person to not listen to these things, right? Because, I mean, they are the people that we care about us the most, yet they are the ones saying these things. What about plan B? Don't forget plan B. His formula was simple. If I can go out there into the world and provide more value than my competitors, I'm going to succeed by default. So he fought. It is so, so different. And as you're about to find out today throughout his journey, how we perceive value changes from person to person. What well, one person believes that they are receiving an incredible value, the other person thinks that it's just a bare minimum. And so it is so important, so important to understand what the customer's perception of value is, because ultimately they are the ones who call the shots. But how do we create value? In order to create value, we must first understand that we are not going to have all the answers, that we must upskill ourselves. The road of the entrepreneurial way is a roller coaster ride. There is no greater high when everything is going right as an entrepreneur. You feel invincible. You feel you could crush the world with your hands. But there is also no greater low when things don't go well. And it's balancing those emotions and rising to the occasion when it matters, which will ultimately determine the fate. Is it going to be a successful entrepreneurship journey or an unsuccessful entrepreneurship journey? So he begins. His way, the pros and cons. 
He's decided there is no plan B. I'm going to burn the boats. I'm here now. I'm either going to succeed or I'm going to fail. But what I won't do is I won't die without trying. Now, he's a good listener. He's a good salesman. And because he was a good salesman, he thought to himself, I'm going to go out there into the world and I'm going to help these businesses with sales. That is going to be my crushing amount of value that I can provide there into the world. He reads the books. He finds mentors. He listens to people that have done it before him. He gets feedback. And so he was good at sales. He was a good listener. And he decided this is the path. This is what I was meant to do. And so he gave us all his courage and he goes into his boss's office and he says the two words that every entrepreneur dreams of saying to their boss, I quit. And he storms out of there and here starts business number one. Now I'm going to role play how the conversations went with those customers. So he would be there. Hi, I would like to help your business with sales. Would that be of value to you? And here they are, those customers. Wait, what? You're going you're gonna to help me? Like, how? How does that even work? I don't understand what it is that you're trying to offer me. But he brushes off that first incident. He says, that was only a one-off. The next one, the next one, the next one will understand what I do. So here we go again. Hi, my business specializes in helping other businesses with sales, and we'd love to provide value to you. Business number two goes, we already have a sales team. Why would we need you? As you can already start to tell how business number one went, Business number one failed miserably. And entrepreneurship had just landed its first punch. Some of us never get up from that first punch. For some entrepreneurs, that's all it takes. But that's life. Some of us decide, yeah, <laughs> I tried this whole entrepreneur thing and I'm done. But not this man. I mean, let's be clear. He failed miserably. And not only had he failed, and he was dealing with those emotions, but he was now going to go back to work at the place where he told everyone he was going to succeed. Failure. Devastating. How embarrassing. He kept on telling himself. He was down. But he wasn't out. He did go back to work in that particular organization. But at night time, he was creating his new masterpiece. And it would take some time for it to come to fruition, but he didn't give up. And so at night, he would ask himself, he would ask himself a lot of questions. He would say to himself, why couldn't they see the value that I was providing to them? Why couldn't they see my intentions? How can I make this better? How can I learn from this? Because it is inevitable that we are going to fail. It's inevitable. But it's the lessons that we learn. It's going from failure to failure, failing forward and learning that ultimately will lead us down the road to find the solutions and find new creative ways to solve problems out there into the world. And so he goes back to square one. He thinks about it. He thinks about it long and hard. Where did I go wrong? How can I make sure to not do that mistake again? And if I'm going to do new mistakes, what are the lessons from those that are going to propel me to success eventually? And he learned the best lesson throughout that first business. And the lesson is, it's not about the value that you think you're giving to the world. It's the perception of value that your customers, 
It's what the customer perceives as value. Because by now, he was exhausted from trying. He was trying. He was giving it everything. And it just wasn't working. And he realized it's a perception of value. The customers are not understanding the value that I was trying to provide. So he goes towards a different industry. He starts to look at how this industry was doing their work. And he realized that every agency in this particular industry was just offering their services on an hourly rate. And he had learned a lot by now. The books, the mentors, the failures. And he thought to himself, this could be the one. This could be an industry where I can change the game ever so slightly. And I can innovate. And I can provide something that the others simply will not be able to compete on. Now, to think outside the square, we must take all the lessons that we've ever learned and see things from a different perspective. If you're able to take a life lesson from one area of your life and apply it to a different area of your life, you can innovate. And that's what he did. And so, once again, the voices start coming in. What about plan B? Oh, you can't be serious. You can't be doing that again. It almost crushed you last time. Please, stay in your job. Please, don't do that again. Stay here, stay safe. But he looked at himself in the mirror and he said, all right, here we go again. And business number two started. He stormed into his boss's office, but he knew that this time it was going to be the last time. He knew, he could just feel it, that it was going to be the last time. And so he said it again, I quit. And business number two was underway. This time, the conversations with the customers were different. He would begin the conversation by saying, Mr. Customer, is it true that you're currently paying hourly and most months it goes over budget? And the business would say, yes, it is true. We do go over budget every month. And Mr. Customer, what if my company could provide a fixed rate service where you know exactly how much it is every month and there's no ifs, no buts? The customer would reply, well, that would be great, but I'm in a contract. I'm glad you brought that up, he said. We are so confident in the value that we can provide to you that we are willing to offer it on a month-by-month -month basis. No contract. There is no company that does that in this field. That's how confident we are that we can provide value to you. The customer replied, that's amazing. I'm in. You see, for the first time, the stars aligned for him. He was offering a crushing amount of value. And this time, the customers saw it too. But let's be clear. He would have not got to that spot to change the game ever so slightly that he innovated and provided value beyond what the competitors could do had it not been for the failures, had it not been for the books, had it not been for the haters who were sitting there waiting patiently for this entrepreneur to give up on his dreams. He took it further. He innovated. He didn't give up. And that, to me, is the spirit of entrepreneurship. Because to me, innovation at its core is having your customers at the front of mind and delivering a crushing amount of value to them. As we look towards the future of entrepreneurship, to the next leaders, to the next risk takers, to the ones who are going to go out there and try and beat the odds, let's show them our support. To the men and women who will go out into the world and try and be that one in a hundred. Now, as for the men 
who gave so much value that it almost crushed him to the one that beat the odds. He was me. And it can be you too. Thank you.